previous video we learned about the five kingdoms of classification that is you take any living organism in this way, any living organism they should be occupying any of this five kingdoms if it is not present in any of these five kingdoms then it's not a living thing so okay, living organism so which are these five kingdoms so the five kingdoms of the living world are the kingdom monera kingdom protista kingdom mycota or fungi kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia so these are the five kingdoms and we take any organism they are occupying any of these uh, five kingdoms okay if it is not occupied it is not found in any of this kingdom then it is not a living form that's why viruses are not included in the under any of this five kingdom because we know very well viruses are not living form it is just an entity as long as like it looks like a I mean, like a uh, dust particle as long as it is outside the body of a living organism when it gains entry into the body of living organism only then it shows the living characteristic what is the basic characteristic to identify a living from a non living it should possess a cell right as viruses do not possess a, possess a cell then it's not a it's not considered as a uh, living thing so you take any living form living form is what it should have it must have a cell so you take any living organism they are occupying any of these five kingdoms there is only one uh, change we have seen and we know that robert whitaker robert whitaker gave this five kingdom classification there is only one even now we all follow the only this five kingdom but with slight variation that is one more biologist an american biologist called carl woos carl woos he gave two more division under the kingdom monera the two divisions are archaebacteria and eubacteria the eubacteria when you compare to eubacteria they both are prokaryotic only slight differences are there in archaebacteria and eubacteria all the cyanobacteria everything comes under eubacteria Yeah. Okay, so these things will be learning in higher classes. So this is about the five kingdom classification, and uh, the kingdom monera you will find two more divisions. That is, archaebacteria and eubacteria. This is given by Carl Woos. The five uh, kingdom classification is given by Robert Whitaker. And how do we uh, put these organisms? right uh, in different uh, kingdoms right then different levels also we learn right high kingdoms we find in our living world right so when i say living world we know how we classify the living things right how do we classify the living things we know the basic character what are the basic character of a living thing it should possess a cell so when now uh, anything which has a cell then we put it in the living world and then we how to identify we how to find out right which uh, whether it belongs to the kingdom promonera protista or the fungi or animalia or plantae for putting into these kingdom we should know the basic characteristic of uh, this I mean, organism which belong to these five kingdoms right so each kingdom has certain organism which have been put under these five kingdoms right so they have certain characteristics so the minute we say this organism king belong to the kingdom plantae so we will know what are the characteristics right so that's why it becomes very easy for us to classify and we learned about the hierarchy also right what is hierarchy hierarchy so we know what is hierarchy So let me write down what is hierarchy. Hierarchy means what? The rankings. Hierarchy. Hierarchy means it is rankings, right? Rankings. So you would all then uh, in our own house we have the rankings, isn't it? Hierarchy. So which who occupies the highest ranking? Of course, your father. Next will be your mother. Then if you have elder brother or sister, they come occupy the next level. Like that, right? The youngest will be occupying the lowest level. 
level. If you talk about the school, so we have uh, uh, secretary, then following him we have Swami, Swamiji, who is our president, then secretary occupies the next one, next will be principal, then the teachers, assistant teachers, then the attenders. So that is called hierarchy, the position, ranking. So in the defense also we have this ranking system, isn't it? So we have the commandos, colonels, lieutenants, major, captain. So these are all ranking. So we also in the living world we have this levels of classification. Several levels of classification. We, I mean, I told you, right? So this is the several levels of classification. That is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And I know I told you how to remember this seven levels of classification. So when we tell, we'll take one organism, one animal. Okay? So I don't know whether it's an animal. So I just take the, I mean, I know that it's an animal because I know it cannot prepare their some food, it's not green in color and it moves, right? So it is an animal. So now let us take the example of lion. Let us take the example of lion. Lion and man, both will take. Okay, both are animals. So when both are animals, to which kingdom it belongs to? We belong to, we will belong to the kingdom Animalia. Both lion and man belong to the kingdom Animalia. So kingdom will be the last one, right? Then it is the kingdom Monera or Protista. It includes all the organism there, right? Whichever have the characteristic, they put it in that uh, kingdom. When you talk about the plants, we find so many different varieties of plants. So whichever is green in color, which are photosynthetic and whose cell is made up of uh, cellulose, we put it in the kingdom, uh, kingdom plantae. In the same way, all the animals, all the animals, irrespective of their uh, size uh, or uh, you know how well they are developed, if it is a non-photosynthetic, that is, you know, prepare some food and it moves with the help, maybe it moves uh, around, right? So we know the characteristics of animals. So we put that in the kingdom animalia. So kingdom animalia will have so many organisms, varieties of organisms. So how to again classify that? So we go to the next level. What is the next level? Phylum. Phylum is the next level. So we know that uh, animals, when we talk about animals, why are they will belong to either invertebrate group or vertebrate group. So we have to find out whether it has a backbone or not. If it has a backbone, then it belongs to the phylum vertebrate or we say uh, chordata. Right? And the other one will be called invertebrate. Now, lion and man, both are vertebrate. So, we belong to the same phylum. We belong to the same phylum, that is chordata. Okay? Phylum chordata. Okay? Phylum chordata. Then, coming to class, both lion and man, they are mammalia, mammals. They belong to the class mammalia because they are mammals because they give birth to their animals directly. Directly. Okay, they don't lay egg. They give birth to their animals directly and they feed their animals with their own milk. Okay. So they, we both belong to same class. So up to here, that is kingdom phylum class, we share same characteristic. Let us come to the next level, order. When it comes to order, we change. That is, when we talk about order, lion belongs to order carnivora and we belong to the order primates or primates. See, there we start separating. Okay? Then coming to family, they belong to the family Felidae and we belong to the family Hominidae. Okay? Genus is Panthera and what is our genus? Homo. Okay? And species Lioness, Leo. And what species we belong to? We belong to the species Sapien. So, what is the scientific name of lion now? The scientific name of lion is Panthera Leo. Thank you.
Panthera, Leo and Manus, Homo sapien. This is how they give the name. Okay, scientific name is given like this only based on the seven levels of classification. Whether it's plants or animals or microbes or I mean, that is whether monerals or protista. Okay, all this organism will be classified like this only and they are given the name. So, which is the lowest level of classification? Species. What are species? Species are the species are the similar organisms. Similar organisms which can breed, which can breed among themselves and produce the young ones, that is fertile young ones. Breed among themselves and produce fertile young ones. Fertile animals means when these uh, babies are grown up, they can give birth to uh, the same species. Okay, that is a lion cub, when it grows up, and it can give birth to its generation, its, uh, its young one. Okay, that's called fertile uh, young one. Okay, I hope you understood what is uh, hierarchy of classification, what are the seven levels of classification, why it is done, because whenever we identify an organism, we have to put it in one kingdom, right? So we have five kingdoms, so it may belong to any of these five kingdoms. Then again, they have to study their structures, characteristics, everything. When they go deep into that, then again, we will segregate that, right? So now, uh, when, I, when I take, instead of uh, a lion, if I take octopus, so it, is, it will come under five, I mean, different phyla. That is, it will be inverted rates, right? See, there is a we the we separate, we can segregate like that. So when we have learned certain characteristics, we can segregate, we have to follow this hierarchy so that the minute I say this organism belongs to the genus Panthera. Let us take the genus Panthera. So I can put all those organisms which belongs to the genus Panthera. Which are the organisms which will come under Panthera? It may be lion, it may be tiger, it may be panther. So they all belong to the same genus. But they don't belong to the same species. Species is always, it is different. Okay? Understood? So panther, like if it, it is panther leo for lion and if it is Tiger. tiger. Tiger also belongs to the genus Panthera, but species is different. So, when uh, tiger fit in, it will be Panthera tigris. It will be Panthera tigris. If it is uh, a panther, okay? So, we say, uh, not panther, leopard, everything, no? It will be saying Panthera pardus, okay? So, species is unique, right? So, a particular group of organisms only will belong to a particular species. That's why I said, species are similar organism. Lion and tiger are not similar. Few characters are similar. Understood? So, species similar organism which can breed among themselves and produce the fertile young ones. Okay? Breed among themselves and produce fertile young ones. That is called species. I hope you have understood this much. Okay? Now let us learn of the characteristics of this five kingdom. So when we see the characteristics of the kingdom, an organism which, are, which belong to the kingdom Monera, so they are all prokaryotic organisms. These organisms belong to the group prokaryotes. So what are prokaryotes? Prokaryotes are the organisms which do not have a defined nucleus. They don't have a defined nucleus. That means the nucleus is not bounded by a nuclear membrane. See, in higher organisms, that is, if at all we take our own cell, we know that nucleus is bounded by a nuclear membrane. And our cells will have so many organelles are present inside the cell. But when we look at the, uh, look at this uh, organism which belong to Monera, they don't have organelles. They don't have this well-defined organelles are not present. They don't have mitochondria, Golgi bodies, or they have, don't have lysosome like that. They, at the most, you can find ribosome and they will be very, very small. 
small kind structure. Okay, then though they are so very tiny, though they are prokaryotic organism, within the organism we find some diversity, variety we do find. Because in some in the uh, monerans, the monera, there are some uh, organisms, some uh, cells will have, some organism will have cell wall. You know, we have learnt about the presence of cell wall in plants. So these organisms, the bacteria, see I told you, monera, when I say monera, it includes bacteria. So bacteria, the minute you hear bacteria, you should know it belongs to the kingdom. Kingdom Monera. Bacteria belong to the Kingdom Monera. It also includes the cyanobacteria. What is cyanobacteria? It is the blue green algae. And mycoplasma, mycoplasma is the tiniest bacteria. And when I say bacteria, you know, different kinds of bacteria we have learned, right? Or maybe you are aware of, right? The bacteria which will cause several diseases. And there are some bacteria which will help in the nitrogen fixing, right? Some bacteria live in a symbiotic relationship, right? So bacteria in general, you know, they all belong to the kingdom Monera. What are the characteristics? They are prokaryotes, right? And they may have cell wall, they may not have cell wall. If it is made up of cell wall, how do I, if I call I give you a cell, okay? And I, I want you to find out, right? I give you two slides. One is a plant cell, another one is a bacterial cell. And you have to make sure which is plant cell and which is, and I mean, which is bacterial cell. Because both will have the cell wall. How to identify? We have to find out the nature of the cell wall. What is the cell wall made up of? A plant cell is a cell. In plant cell, the cell wall is made up of cellulose, which we know very well. Whereas a bacterial cell is made up of a substance called peptidoglycan. Now, let us come to the mode of nutrition. What kind of food it takes, right? Okay, whether it is an autotrophic organism or whether it is a heterotrophic organism. So, bacteria or the monerals, they may be if you are autotrophs, some are heterotrophs, right? So, you know that uh, purple bacteria, they prepare their own food by using chemical substances, that is chemosynthesis, right? So, by using chemosynthesis, chemical substances which is present in their surrounding, they prepare their own food. That is chemosynthetic bacteria which is an autotroph. They may be heterotrophic. Heterotrophic, so most of them will be living as parasite, right? So if at all I write Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae is a bacteria which is a parasite which will cause disease in us. So Vibrio cholerae you know. And leprosy causing bacteria and TB causing bacteria, tetanus causing bacteria. So they are all parasitic bacteria. And coming to saprotrophs, most of the bacteria are saprotrophs. That is they are decomposers and some live in symbiotic relationship. Some live, live in symbiotic relationship. One fine example which always we remember is rhizobium. The rhizobium bacteria will live in the root nodules of the leguminous plants and they help in nitrogen fixation. So that is symbiotic relationship. So their mode of nutrition, they may be autotrophic or they may be heterotrophic. If at all you are talking about heterotrophic mode of nutrition, they may be parasitic, they may be symbiotic or they may be saprotrophic, that is decomposer. So you know the structure of bacteria, right? So this is the structure of bacteria. So it will be having cell membrane and also cell wall. So I am just drawing. See when we talked about that uh, U bacteria. The U bacteria will have a cell wall, okay? The U bacteria will have a cell wall and this cell wall will be made up of peptidoglycan and this is cell membrane. This is cell membrane and inside, inside you find the cytoplasm. So they will have cytoplasm, okay? And they have this kind of structure called mesosomes, which does the which does the function of mitochondria. And coming to 
the nucleus so they don't have a definite nuclear membrane the nucleus will be left freely in the cytoplasm like this they may have one circular chromosome also they have a circular chromosome also this is called nucleoid okay or nucleus and this is the one which has the circular chromosome which we call it plasmid and for locomotion they may have they may have this flagellar kind of structure for locomotion so this is the structure of bacteria they have very tiny very tiny very few ribosomes will be present if it is a disease causing bacteria if it is a disease causing bacteria they will have one more hard capsule they will have one more coat if it is a pathogenic bacteria pathogen is what the disease causing organism if it is a pathogen if it is a disease causing bacteria it will have an additional coat it will have an additional coat called capsule so this is about this is the structure of bacteria okay and we will be learning about anabina rhizobia anabina is also a, a cyanobacteria anabina is cyanobacteria which will be living like this uh, filament like structure okay edible like structure like this you will find okay they have always cytoplasm and it will be present anadina is a cyanobacteria so this is about talking the monera so next time when we say this organism is a prokaryote organism and it has a cell wall okay so it is unisome and it has a prokaryote and it may be autotrophic or heterotrophic they may have cell wall they may not have cell wall so when we know all the characters so immediately we can put the organism under the kingdom monera now let us learn about the kingdom protista